Chapter 15, Peter Rabbit is caught in a snare. When Peter Rabbit reached up to nibble the bark of one of Farmer Brown's young trees, he felt something tugging at one of his hind legs. He was so startled that he jumped to get away. Instead of doing this, he fell flat on his face. The thing on his hind leg had tightened and held him fast. A great fear came to Peter Rabbit, and lying there in the snow, he kicked and struggled with all his might. But the more he kicked, the tighter grew that hateful thing on his leg. Finally, he grew too tired to kick any more, and lay still. The dreadful thing that held him hurt his leg, but it didn't pull when he lay still. When he had grown a little calmer, Peter sat up to examine the thing which held him so fast. It was something like one of the blackberry vines he had sometimes tripped over, only it was bright and shiny, and had no branches or tiny prickers, and one end was fastened to a stake. Peter tried to bite off the shiny thing, but even his great sharp front teeth couldn't cut it. Then Peter knew what it was. It was wire. It was a snare which Farmer Brown had set to catch him, and which he had walked right into because he had been so greedy for the bark of the young peach tree, and he had not used his eyes to look out for danger. Oh, how Peter Rabbit did wish that he had not been so curious to know what Farmer Brown had been doing that day, and that he had gone straight home as he had meant to do, instead of trying to get one more meal of young peach bark. Big tears rolled down Peter's cheeks. What should he do? What could he do? For a long time, Peter sat in the moonlight, trying to think of something to do. At last, he thought of the stake to which that hateful wire was fastened. The stake was of wood, and Peter's teeth would cut wood. Peter's heart gave a great leap of hope, and he began at once to dig away the snow from around the stake, and then settled himself to gnaw the stake in two. Peter had been hard at work on the stake a long time, and had it a little more than half cut through when he heard a loud sniff down at the other end of the orchard. He looked up to see, whom do you think? Why, Bowser the Hound! He hadn't seen Peter yet, but he had already found Peter's tracks, and it would be but a few minutes before he found Peter himself. Poor Peter Rabbit! There wasn't time to finish cutting off the stake. What could he do? He made a frightened jump, just as he had when he first felt the wire tugging at his leg. Just as before, he was thrown flat on his face. He scrambled to his feet and jumped again, only to be thrown just as before. Just then Bowser the Hound saw him, and opening his mouth, sent forth a great roar. Peter made one more frantic jump. Snap! The stake had broken. Peter pitched forward on his head, turned a somersault, and scrambled to his feet. He was free at last. That is, he could run, but after him dragged a piece of the stake. How Peter did run! It was hard work, for you know he had to drag that piece of stake after him, but he did it and just in time he crawled into the old stone wall on one side of the orchard, while Bowser the Hound barked his disappointment to the moon. End of chapter 15 Chapter 16 Peter Rabbit's Hard Journey Peter Rabbit sat in the old stone wall along one side of Farmer Brown's orchard, waiting for Mrs. Moon to put out her light and leave the world in darkness until jolly, round, red Mr. Sun should kick off his rosy bedclothes and begin his daily climb up in the blue, blue sky. In the winter, Mr. Sun is a late sleeper and peter knew that there would be two or three hours after mrs moon had put out her light when it would be quite dark and peter also knew too that by this time hooty the owl would probably have caught his dinner so would old granny fox and reddy fox 
Bowser the Hound would be too sleepy to be on the watch, it would be the very safest time for Peter to try to get to his dear old briar patch. So Peter waited and waited. Twice Bowser the Hound, who had chased him into the old wall, came over and barked at him and tried to get at him. But the old wall kept Peter safe, and Bowser gave it up. And all the time Peter sat waiting, he was in great pain. You see, that shiny wire had drawn so tight that it cut into his flesh and hurt dreadfully. And to the other end of the wire was fastened a piece of wood, part of the stake to which the snare had been fastened and which Peter had managed to gnaw and break off. It was on account of this that Peter had waited for Mrs. Moon to put out her light. He knew that with that stake dragging after him, he would have to go very slowly, and he could not run any more risk of danger than he actually had to. So he waited and waited, and by and by, sure enough, Mrs. Moon put out her light. Peter waited a little longer, listening with all his might. Everything was still. Then Peter crept out of the old stone wall. Right away trouble began. The stake dragging at the end of the wire fast to his leg caught among the stones and pulled Peter up short. My, how it did hurt! It made the tears come, but Peter shut his teeth hard and turning back he worked until he got the stake free. Then he started on once more, dragging the stake after him. Very slowly across the orchard and under the fence on the other side crept Peter Rabbit, his legs so stiff and sore that he could hardly touch it to the snow, and all the time dragging that piece of stake which seemed to grow heavier and harder to drag every minute. Peter did not dare to go across the open fields for fear some danger might happen along, and he would have no place to hide. So he crept along close to the fences where the bushes grow, and this made it very, very hard, for the dragging stake was forever catching in the bushes with a yank at the sore leg, which brought Peter up short with a squeal of pain. This was bad enough, but all the time Peter was filled with a dreadful fear that Hooty the Owl or Granny Fox might just happen along. He had to stop to rest very, very often, and then he would listen and listen. Over and over again he said to himself, Oh dear, whatever did I go up to the young peach orchard for when I knew I had no business there? Why couldn't I have been content with all the good things that were mine in the green forest and on the green meadows? Oh dear, oh dear! Just as jolly, round, red Mr. Sun began to light up the green meadows, Peter Rabbit reached the dear old briar patch. Danny Meadow Mouse was sitting on the edge of it, anxiously watching for him. Peter crawled up and started to creep in along one of his little private paths. He got in himself, but the dragging stake caught among the brambles, and Peter just fell down in the snow right where he was, too tired and worn out to move. End of chapter 16 Chapter 17 Danny Meadow Mouse Becomes Worried Danny Meadow Mouse limped around through the dear old briar patch where he had lived with Peter Rabbit ever since he had squirmed out of the claws of Hooty the Owl and dropped there right at the feet of Peter Rabbit. Danny limped because he was still lame and sore from Hooty's terrible claws, but he didn't let himself think much about that, because he was so thankful to be alive at all. So he limped around in the old briar patch, picking up seed which had fallen on the snow, and sometimes pulling down a few of the red berries which cling all winter to the wild rose bushes. The seeds in these were very nice indeed, and Danny always felt especially good after a meal of them. Danny Meadow Mouse had grown very fond of Peter Rabbit, for Peter had been very, very good to him. Danny felt that he never, never could repay all of Peter's kindness. 
It had been very good of Peter to offer to share the old briar patch with Danny, because Danny was so far from his own home that it would not be safe for him to try to get back there. But Peter had done more than that. He had taken care of Danny such good care during the first few days after danny's escape from hooty the owl he had brought good things to eat while danny was too weak and sore to get things for himself oh peter had been very good indeed to him but now as danny limped around he was not happy no sir he was not happy the truth is danny meadow mouse was worried it was a different kind of worry from any he had known before. You see, for the first time in his life, Danny was worrying about someone else. He was worrying about Peter Rabbit. Peter had been gone from the old briar patch a whole night and a whole day. He often was gone all night, but never all day, too. Danny was sure that something had happened to Peter. He thought of how he had begged Peter not to go up to Farmer Brown's young peach orchard. He had felt in his bones that it was not safe, that something dreadful would happen to Peter. How Peter had laughed at him and bravely started off. Why hadn't he come home? As he limped around, Danny talked to himself. Why cannot people be content with all the good things that are sent, and mind their own affairs at home instead of going forth to roam? It was now the second night since Peter Rabbit had gone away. Danny Meadow Mouse couldn't sleep at all. Round and round through the old briar patch he limped, and finally sat down at the edge of it to wait and watch. At last, just as jolly, round, red Mr. Sun sent his first long rays of light across the green meadows, Danny saw something crawling towards the old briar patch. He rubbed his eyes and looked again. It was—no, it, it couldn't be. Yes, it was Peter Rabbit. But what was the matter with him? Always before, Peter had come home lipperty-lipperty-lipperty-lip. But now he was crawling, actually crawling. Danny Meadow Mouse didn't know what to make of it. Nearer and nearer came Peter. Something was following him. No, Peter was dragging something after him. At last, Peter started to crawl along one of his little private paths into the old briar patch. The thing dragging behind caught in the brambles, and Peter fell headlong in the snow, too tired and worn out to move. Then Danny saw what the trouble was. A wire was fast to one of Peter's long hind legs, and to the other end of the wire was fastened part of a stake. Peter had been caught in a snare. Danny hurried over to Peter, and tears stood in his eyes. Poor Peter Rabbit! Oh, I'm so sorry, Peter, he whispered. End of chapter 17 Chapter 18 Danny Meadow Mouse Returns a Kindness There Peter Rabbit lay. He had dragged that piece of stake a long way, a very long way indeed. But now he could drag it no farther for it had caught in the bramble bushes. So Peter just dropped on the snow and cried. Yes, sir, he cried. You see, he was so tired and worn out and frightened, and his leg was so stiff and sore and hurt him so. And then it was so dreadful to actually get home and be stopped right on your very own doorstep. So Peter just lay there and cried. Just supposing old Granny Fox should come poking around and find Peter caught that way, all she would have to do would be to get hold of that hateful stake caught in the bramble bushes and pull Peter out where she could get him. Do you wonder that Peter cried? By and by he became aware that someone was wiping away his tears. 
It was Danny Meadow Mouse, and Danny was singing in a funny little voice. Pretty soon Peter stopped crying and listened, and this is what he heard. Isn't any use to cry, not a bit, not a bit. Wipe your eyes and wipe them dry. Use your wit, use your wit. Just remember that tomorrow never brings a single sorrow. Yesterday has gone forever, but tomorrow gets here never. Chase your worries all away. Nothing's worse than just today. Peter smiled in spite of himself. That's right, that's right. Smile away, Peter Rabbit. Smile away. Your troubles, sir, are all today, and between you and me, I don't believe they are so bad as you think they are. Now you lie still just where you are while I go see what could be done. With that, off whisked Danny Meadow Mouse as spry as you please, in spite of his lame leg, and in a few minutes Peter knew by little twitches of the wire on his leg that Danny was doing something at the other end. He was. Danny Meadow Mouse had set out to gnaw that piece of steak all to splinters. So there he sat and gnawed and gnawed and gnawed. Jolly round red Mr. Sun climbed higher and higher in the sky, and Danny Meadow Mouse grew hungry. But still he kept right on gnawing at that bothersome steak. By and by, happening to look across the snow-covered green meadows, he saw something that made his heart jump. It was Farmer Brown's boy coming straight over towards the dear old briar patch. Danny didn't say a word to Peter Rabbit. He gnawed faster than ever. Farmer Brown's boy was almost there when Danny stopped gnawing. There was only a tiny bit of the steak left now, and Danny hurried to tell Peter Rabbit that there was nothing to stop him now from going to his most secret retreat in the very heart of the old briar patch. While Peter slowly dragged his way along, Danny trotted behind to see that the wire did not catch in the bushes. They had safely reached Peter Rabbit's secretest retreat when Farmer Brown's boy came up to the edge of the dear old briar patch. So this is where that rabbit that killed our peach tree lives, said he. We'll try a few snares and put you out of mischief. And for the rest of the afternoon, Farmer Brown's boy was very busy around the edge of the old briar patch. End of chapter 18 Chapter 19 Peter Rabbit and Danny Meadow Mouse Live High Peter Rabbit sat in his secretest place in the dear old briar patch with one of his long hind legs all swelled up and terribly sore because of the fine wire fast around it and cutting into it. He could hear Farmer Brown's boy going around on the edge of the dear old briar patch and stopping every little while to do something. In spite of his pain, Peter was curious. Finally, he called Danny Meadow Mouse. Danny, you are small and can keep out of sight easier than I can. Go as near as ever you dare to Farmer Brown's boy and find out what he's doing, said Peter Rabbit. So Danny Meadow Mouse crept out as near to Farmer Brown's boy as ever he dared and studied and studied to make out what Farmer Brown's boy was doing. By and by he returned to Peter Rabbit. I don't know what he's doing, Peter, but he's putting something in every one of your private little paths leading into the briar patch from the green meadows. Ha! said Peter Rabbit. There are little loops of that queer stuff you've got hanging to your leg, Peter, continued Danny Meadow Mouse. Just so, said Peter Rabbit. And he's put cabbage leaves and pieces of apple all around, said Danny. We must be careful, said Peter Rabbit. Peter's leg was in a very bad way indeed, and Peter suffered a great deal of pain. The worst of it was... He didn't know how to get off the wire that was cutting into it. He had tried to cut the wire with his big teeth, but he couldn't do it. Danny Meadow Mouse had tried and tried to gnaw the wire, 
but it wasn't the least bit of use. But Danny wasn't easily discouraged, and he kept working and working at it. Once he thought he felt it slip a little. He said nothing, but kept right on working. Pretty soon he was sure it slipped. He went right on working harder than ever. By and by he had it so loose that he slipped it right off of Peter's leg, and Peter didn't know anything about it. You see, that cruel wire snare had been so tight that Peter didn't have any feeling except of pain left in his leg, and so when Danny Meadow Mouse pulled the cruel wire snare off, Peter didn't know it until Danny held it up in front of him. My, how thankful Peter was, and how he did thank Danny Meadow Mouse. But Danny said that it was nothing at all, just nothing at all, and that he owed more than that to Peter Rabbit for being so good to him and letting him live in the dear old briar patch. It was a long time before Peter could hop as he used to, but after the first day he managed to get around. He found that Farmer Brown's boy had spread those miserable wire snares in every one of his private little paths, but Peter knew what they were now. He showed Danny Meadow Mouse how he, because he was so small, could safely run about among the snares and steal all the cabbage leaves and apples which Farmer Brown's boy had put there for bait. Danny Meadow Mouse thought this great fun and a great joke on Farmer Brown's boy. So every day he stole the bait, and he and Peter Rabbit lived high while Peter's leg was getting well, and all the time Farmer Brown's boy wondered why he couldn't catch Peter Rabbit. End of chapter 19